PeachTools.com. G'day guys, Pete from Peach Tools, great to see you here again today. Hey, today I want to have a bit of a talk about cutting straight lines with your plasma cutter when you're first starting out. Because the first thing you want to learn to do is how to cut straight. Nothing worse, you're trying to cut straight and it looks like a dog leg and you get all discouraged and all sorts of things. So I'll show you a couple of quick ways to cut straight with a plasma cutter when you're first starting out. And as usual guys, remember, if you like my videos, subscribe, drop me a like, drop me a comment, and don't forget to come see me at peachtools.com, and let's get into it, eh? So guys, placing the cutting straight lines. When I first started, I was cutting whole sheets lengthways, basically, so I was doing 2.4 metres at a time. Um, this one's cut in half, so this is about 1,200, I think. About 1,200 long, so we're exactly sort of like half a sheet, if you understand what I'm saying. So this is quite a long cut really to cut straight and you're going to have to clamp it or we're going to have to do something with it. But first of all guys I'll show you if you're cutting just little bits and pieces how easy it is and what I use as a guide. Yeah, you can use a lump of wood like a short lump of wood if you're only doing shortcuts or whatever or you can use a, uh, a spirit level like this. Um, a lump of wood in that is ideal for the longer cuts I'll show you in a minute how we use that. But if I'm just doing small cuts like a lot of us guys do when we start and we're making little projects and that for around home you got yourself an old square like that, and what you need to do is the, the ruler on it is quite heavy, a heavy steel ruler, so as you're buying one. Um, I've got a few of them floating around and I just took the actual ruler piece off it. And why I like this is because it's, it's really solid and it doesn't bend, and it's just the right thickness for my plasma cutter tip. I'll show you, because I'm using a uh, PT31, which is a drag tip. If you're using a gun like this, it's got a standoff guide on it. You may need to have a little bit thicker guide, whatever you're running it down on, because these things need to be spaced off your work, whereas this one here can drag along the steel that you're cutting, and I think that makes life a lot easier when you're trying to cut straight and that sort of thing anyway. But that's just me. So anyway, guys, we're just doing little cuts like that, little straight cuts, say for example, to come down there and then cut it off there. Piece of cake, you don't need a clamp, you don't need anything. Just this little ruler here, like I showed you off your square, or anything really, that's about the same thickness as this guy, because this is really ideal to run right down there, level with that, if you understand that. So what I'm using is just using this as a guide, and even if you're using the shorter tips on this torch, the shorter tips will still be above the line here, and it's really easy to control. Whereas if you've got it over here, it's not so easy to control, if you understand what I'm saying. I'll show you what I mean. Always start from an edge when you're cutting, guys. Then we just turn them round. There we go, relatively straight. So let's say guys we want to cut this strip out here and then go along here where it's already cut. Just remember to, you're going to have to hold it in the front, hold it in the back, which is quite a pain really, even on a short length like this. Uh, and the longer you have you know, your ruler or whatever you're cutting against, whatever you're cutting against, the longer it is, the more arms you need to have or whatever, you, then you're going to end up having to clamp it. So anyway, we'll do this anyway. Turn them around like so. Now remember guys, when we're cutting in the opposite direction, always start your cut from in this hole that we've already made so it doesn't destroy our tips. There you go, it's not too bad. Semi square there, that's not too bad. And that's all very well when you're doing really short lengths like this because you can control it. All you gotta do, like I said, is put one finger there and one finger there and, and you can you got it, you got it down pat, you know what I mean? But you start running into trouble, remember what I said guys, because this is so long, like it's half a full sheet, and if we want to cut this off here square, so from where we left off before, all the way down to this end here, no way how we're going to do it with a little ruler like this, so we're going to have to go to something a bit bigger. Now you can use a, um, you can use a level, but I don't like that because we're way too high here in the ridge. I don't like it anyway, and also it's not long enough, you have to have a pretty long level to, to do that. So what I do guys, I don't know if you're anything like me, I just go and find a piece of timber, as long as it's reasonably straight. Look down the guts of it like that, see if it's reasonably straight, guys. 
and as it's usually a piece of timber but once again it's not the ideal height so what we're going to have to do is step out our plasma torch I'll show you so whereas this little thin ruler with not so much height we could cut right along where we wanted to cut right along the line you understand what I'm saying because you're only cutting the distance between the hole in your tip there and the outside of your tip so what are you talking three or four millimeters so that's the only three or four millimeter offset you've got to have but when you're using this you can't have three or four millimeters if you try and run that along there you're miles away from your steel and this is like I say this is a drag tip so what we're going to have to do is back it up so if we measure from there and we're going to have to run it along the porcelain which I don't like because the porcelain is shaped and it doesn't give you the much control but we can only do what you can do so this is where it'll be a right pain in the ass, I think so anyway. So put it on your cut, and then you're going to have to measure out from where the porcelain touches it. So we've got about 70 millimetres. What you're going to have to do guys is grab a G-clamp like this. This one's all beaten up, but it still works. See, so this is where it gets uh, horrible. When you're trying to hold this, and everything's moving and sliding, and it's just a... I think it's a pain, but anyway. Now there are other sorts of clamps you can get, of course. But I've just got these, because I'm cheap, and that's what I've had for years, so this is what I use. See, I hit that with the hammer there, guys, just so I could level it up, so it's in the cut that I want it to cut. Because it's not as quite as easy to line up as you think, because the timber's too thick, I think it is anyway. So we're about 70. So we tap that front one over with a hammer, guys. So we'll, we'll just put a G-clamp on the back one here. About 70. We might have to tap this one over as well. We'll just measure it once we, uh, once we get it on there. So we're about right, about 70. Guys, let's try and cut the square and straight. You see that guys, so I'm coming back here, I've backed myself into a corner because I can't go any further back and uh, this, you need to give yourself some room, especially if you're cutting big sheets because even if I don't know if you notice, this, when I was coming down here it's pretty smooth, pretty smooth and still I started backing myself into a corner and then you start jerking, even when I picked up the lead like this it's just got a little bit extra drag on it and it makes all the difference, so you got to not put a lot of weight on here when you're cutting and you've got to try and keep it smooth, but that's easier said than done, eh? I've been cutting this for years and years and years, and it, it still happens to me. When you're backing yourself into a corner like this, this doesn't really help. Anyway, guys, what have we got left? See what I mean? Just when you get a little bit jerky there, it just doesn't cut completely through. But, I mean, it's not a bad cut, all in all, guys. You know, not too bad for a boy, eh? But you see this other end here, guys. You see what I mean when I back myself into a corner? See how it's getting a little bit jerky here? That's entirely because my movement changed. It got real sort of jerky rather than constant and smooth like the front here. Yeah, it's a big difference. Eh? It's an art. Plasma cutting is an art, guys. So we'll take the clamps off, guys. See what we're left with. Eh? See if it looks semi-reasonable. A blind man will be pleased to see it, I suppose. There you go, that's not too bad guys, from a piece of scrap metal, you know, it's reasonably <coughs> straight. Tell you what guys, the best tool I ever made was this. I found an old square, it was an old square ruler that I found at the tip, at the dump. It was damaged on the edge, so I just cut it off, and what I did was, still nice and straight, 
So I just got some magnets on here, you see the magnets? And I pot riveted them onto my roller. And if I was to make another one, I'd make one twice as long, especially if you're going to cut long lengths. But even cutting shorter lengths, this is brilliant. This is absolutely brilliant. You don't have to have those stupid clamps. And it's, uh, it's really good. And because it's offset off the steel that you're cutting, the sparks fly in between the magnet and the ruler, and you don't get the shit in your eyes. There's all sorts of good stuff with it. Anyway, I'll show you guys. So guys, I'll give you a demo with this ruler that I made. If you want to make one of these, I'll put some links up the top. They're really cheap to make. Buy yourself a metal ruler, some magnets. The magnets are cheap as. And uh, hopefully you've got a river gun, or you could probably even bolt it on or whatever. And uh, this really saves a lot of time and a lot of aggravation. But anyway, just measure where you want it. 50 mil, bring them back, 50 mil, 50 mil, yep, 50 mil, so I got my homemade guide there guys, once again cut from the edge, see this, how this fits nicely, you're snug in there, what happens with this is the sparks fly under there and come out that way, don't hit you in the eyeball, and it's all real good. And it saves those stupid clamps. Anyway, let's have a go with this, Pete. Right, so the only disadvantage, guys, is this is not long enough, so I'll just have to reposition it. But it's a lot easier to reposition than what it is that stupid lump of wood. Just pick them up like so. Put them like so. Make sure it's in there. Yep, same place. Come down this end, put them on our 50 mil. 50 mil, beautiful. And continue on cutting. <laughs> so we'll continue on cutting it, guys, but I'll start from this end and I'll meet it up here. Perfect. See, look at that. There you go. A lot better than using that stupid stick anyway, that's what I reckon. Make yourself one of these guys. The longer the better. Of course, depending on what size sheets you're cutting. But uh, yeah, you could actually make one of these a length of a full sheet. And if you put like 10 magnets in there, these magnets are as cheap as chips. I think you can get a pack of 10 for about 10 bucks or something stupid. And they're really, really strong. Like that. So guys, that's Pete's useless tip for the day. Remember guys, if you like my video, subscribe, drop me a like, drop me a comment. Come see me at Pete'sTools.com and we'll see you next time with some more useless tips. See you guys. Pete'sTools.com